Good morning and welcome to our all age service for Advent 4. If you haven't already done so, there are still spaces left to book to come to church over Christmas. Uh, I think there might even be one or two spaces for the walking nativity. Um, there are certainly spaces left on Christmas Eve for our two midnight masses and for 11 o'clock on Christmas morning. I do hope that Anyone who wants to is able to get to church this Christmas. So now Catherine is going to light for us our fourth Advent candle and read our prayer. God of time and eternity, we wait for you. God of outer space and close beside us, we wait for you. God of noise and of silence, we wait for you. In our homes and schools, we work hard. We work at we schools at work and at rest. We wait for you. God of love we light this candle as we wait for you today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Even the darkness is not dark for you, and the night shines like the day. 
let your light scatter the darkness and fill your church with glory. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose all the purposes of the heart. In the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now, when David the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, why have you not built a house of cedar for me? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evil doers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you David, that the Lord will make you 
a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to Luke, glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found, found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you, will be, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of, of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, also has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it, be, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to your O Christ. Today is the final of our Advent series, looking at hope, love, joy, and today, peace. As with hope, love and joy, peace can mean many things. And again, once we begin to think about it, deeper meanings emerge. I started by asking our young people what peace means to them. Here are a few of their responses. The children all seem to point to peace being within ourselves, but also being something that somehow comes from elsewhere. It feels as though that peace is there for us if we can find a way to connect with it. We gather today as pilgrims, seeking to put our experiences and God's love together to find God's role in this peace. So it seems appropriate at this point to affirm our faith, however tentative that feels at the moment. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the ways we connect our faith with our experiences is through art, music and poetry. So this week I asked some of our resident experts to share their thoughts on how these might help us experience peace. 
Dallas speaks about art and Sean about music. How can art portray peace? Peace and art are like faith, inner feelings of love and expression, flights of the mind and imagination. The painter or sculptor tries to capture these emotions in order to share them with us like we share in the peace in our beautiful church, which itself is a work of art in stone, built in the 12th century with faith and love by ordinary people like stonemasons and carvers. How lucky we are in Yorkshire to have had great homegrown artists like Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth, influenced from childhood by the glorious landscape and the painter. Turner, who constantly returned to Yorkshire to capture the beauty of land and sea. In Yorkshire Sculpture Park, I experienced perfect peace and tranquility in the visionary artist James Turrell's creative reconstruction of the deer shelter, an ancient sanctuary for the animals. In this minimal interior with its roof open to the sky, I laid down on one of the stone benches and gazed into that sky, a framed image of heaven, and watched the scudding clouds and flights of birds, the constantly changing patterns of light. It was mesmerizing, so tranquil, so calm, so eternal, so peaceful, no wonder Antony Gormley's Angel of the North spreads its wings to embrace this God-given county, its people and its art. Music has been a huge part of my life, all of my life. I have lovely memories of my father, a true man of Harlech, singing many hymns at the piano. At times of crisis and uncertainty, I often find that music brings peace and comfort. One piece in particular, John Rutter's A Gaelic Blessing, is especially good at doing just that. I was first introduced to the piece in the early years of our augmented choir. Many of you will remember the lovely John Williams, who brought a group of us together at a parish weekend in Wydale approximately 25 years ago to provide music for the final service of the weekend. From there, the augmented choir was born and a Gaelic blessing was one of the early pieces we performed in church. This beautiful piece is typical of many Rutter compositions with gorgeous harmonies making it easy on the ear. Three particular characteristics of a Gaelic blessing are the slow rhythm and quiet dynamics along with the lyrics which evoke feelings of enveloping peacefulness. The words focus on the natural world around us and how it impacts on our senses. The gentle sounds of waves on water, the breeze we might hear or feel on our face, the soft light of the moon and the stars and the stillness of the night all things created as gifts to us from God. I would recommend listening to this in a darkened room, perhaps lit only by a few candles and maybe even with eyes closed, using your imagination to conjure up the different senses and to feel the healing light and peace of God taking away all the cares and troubles of the day just gone. The peace serves as a reminder that whatever is going on in our lives, and however difficult or hopeless things may feel, we are never alone. We are always being watched over and cared for.
Of course, it's not always easy to find that peace in the midst of difficult or just very busy lives. We don't always have time for art, music or nature. Listening to today's readings, I wondered whether peace also comes about by finding our place in God's kingdom and living that out as best we can. The first reading was about someone thinking they had an important job for God, only to find it was actually for someone else to do. In the second, we heard about someone being very surprised to find the God Jo the job God wanted her to do. In Samuel, we heard King David find that he might be a great king, but building the special house for God, a church if you like, was not for him to do. In Luke, we heard Mary given the incredible news that God wanted her to be the mother of his son Jesus. Hardly a reason to be peaceful, we might think. Yet in that reading, as in so many pictures, Mary is shown full of peace. When we talked about this in school collective worship, the children suggested Mary was peaceful because she had Joseph to look after her. Because she knew peace would be important for the baby she was carrying or that she was always a peaceful person, and that was why God chose her. Could it also be that she knew God loved her and was able to accept her role in his kingdom, however challenging that seemed? Maybe one of our roles is to try to share Christ's peace in our work with our friends and family, by our actions. Maybe we can find peace by sharing peace. I asked Hilary to choose a poem and speak about it, which in a way she did, in fact choosing the same words as Ch Sham chose. But the poetry led to a reminder of the power of the peace of God which we share. Hello, I'm Hilary. When I trained to be a teacher, after I'd qualified to be a teacher, I got a job here in Leeds in a primary school. And at the same time, I moved accommodation. I lived in a shared household. One December, one of my housemates said to me, would you like to come to a carol service at my church? Now, I'd stopped going to church when I came here to Leeds. I, I used to go in Blackburn. And I thought, yes, I'd like to go to a carol service. So I went along to a carol service with my housemate. And when I got there, I looked at all the people gathered in that church, all the Christians, and I looked at how they behaved, their demeanour, and I looked at their faces and their eyes, and they had something in their life that I was missing in my life and I didn't know what it was. So after the carol service, came home and that was very nice and I thought I'm going to go back to church to try and find out this something that's missing from my life. So I went along to an evening service and when we stood up to share the peace, the woman next to me shook my hand and I began to feel funny inside, sort of here. And then I began to cry. Now let me tell you something funny about crying and grown-ups. When you're little and you cry, it's because you're hurt or you're upset. And grown-ups do that too. But grown-ups also cry when they're happy. Have you noticed that? If you haven't, just watch the repair shop. All the grown-ups cry there because someone's been very kind to them. So I was happy 
and I was crying. And the woman sat next to me, Margaret, said, are you all right? And I said, you wished me peace. And she said, no, 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 no. I didn't wish you peace. That's what you do for birthdays. You wish someone a happy birthday. I shared the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you. It's a gift. It's a promise. It's free. All you have to do is accept it. So I did. And that's when my life changed. Now, the other thing Alison wanted me to do, apart from talking about that, was to read a poem of some description. And I'd read this on, the, um, on my email at about ten past nine one evening, that Alison would like a poem about peace. So I went and got some books out and thought, I'll find something. But first of all, it's nearly half past nine, and I need to take my little dog Charlie out for his last walk of the day. So I slipped my coat on, and out we went. It was a very still night. And the sky was clear, clear, dark blue. And the moon was shining brightly, and the stars were twinkling. And when I got home, I knew exactly what I was going to read to you. I didn't need my books. This is something that could have been said by Aslan the lion in the Chronicles of Narnia, but it's not. It's actually a Gaelic blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. There doesn't seem a better response to that than to share Christ's peace with one another. God has called us to live in peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share Christ's peace around the parish. Our prayers of intercession begin with a reminder from one of our younger members that sharing Christ's peace should also lead for action. And let's pray together for the peace of the world. We need peace in our world. To make that happen, we will have to stop fighting, stop cutting down trees and stop making a war happen. Please make sure that we have peace. We pray for all places in the world where there is war and fighting. For the leaders, that they might have a change of heart. For all who work for peace. We pray for artists, writers and musicians who help us to find peace, especially those who have had no work in recent times. We pray for those who struggle to find peace because they are grieving or anxious or because of splits in the family. We pray for peace in our community and for peace in our own hearts as we find our place in your kingdom. Amen. With love and compassion, come Lord Jesus.
with judgment and mercy. Come, Lord Jesus, in power and glory. Come, Lord Jesus, in wisdom and truth. Come, Lord Jesus. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's, think, see, let's sing our final hymn together. i
Rejoice, rejoice. 